Graphing quadratic functions. Graphing quadratic functions is a skill that can be helpful in Algebra 2, pre-calculus, and other uses. What we're going to do first is start with the parent function, quadratic function, y equals x squared. And for that, we're going to put some key values in here and recognize a pattern. If we have an input value to this function of 0 for x, we get an output value of 0 squared, which is also 0. If we go for an input value of 1, 1 squared gives us an output value of 1. And if we go to the other side of 0, input value of negative 1, well, negative 1 squared is also 1. If we take an in input value of 2, well, 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. And if we go to the other side, because of symmetry, input value of negative 2 also gives us an output value of 4. And if we go to an input value of 3, well, 3 squared is 9. So, uh, going the other side, an output value of negative 3 is also 9. What we have, we can recognize from this a pattern. As we go from input value from 0 to 1, our output value will increase from 0 to 1 to be 1. As we go from an input value uh, negative of 1 to 2, our output value increases from 1 to 4, so we'll increase by 3. As we increase from inputs from 2 to 3, our output value increases by 5. So we have a 1, 3, 5 type of pattern. And as we go the other direction, we have a plus 1, plus 3, and plus 5 pattern as we go to the other side. And so we can write this up here in this form, a, and a meaning the coefficient of the quadratic term here, a times plus 1, comma, plus 3, comma, plus 5, becomes the basis for the pattern that is going to help us in graphing these quadratic functions. And lastly, we're just going to go ahead and finish graphing this, we have 1 comma 1, negative 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4, negative 2 comma 4, 3 comma 9, negative 3 comma 9, and so we can make a sketch of a quadratic function like this, the shape you've seen a lot, parabola, doesn't have to be perfect, 7 points really helps us do this well, but we can notice in the graph a step increase, 0, as we go from 0, input from 0 to negative 1, our output is up 1. As we go from input of, of negative 1 to negative 2, we have a plus 3 difference. And as we go from input of negative 2 to negative 3, we have a plus 5, an increase of 5. So this becomes the basis for a pattern that's going to serve us well for graphing any quadratic function. Okay, next, we have this function, h of x equals 1 half x squared minus 5. We're going to make a table, x, y, and in this case, a, the value of a is 1 half. And so we're going to replace this a with 1 half times plus 1, comma plus 3, comma plus 5, and all worked out, this is going to translate to our increase of 1 half times 1, which is going to be 1 half plus 1 half, comma plus 3 halves, comma plus 5 over 2. So that is our pattern we're going to use for this particular function. We're going to, first of all, we are going to put in, uh, we should be able to recognize that our, this function is symmetrical about the y-axis. And so if we have an input of 0, our output is going to be 0 squared minus 5. So negative 5 is our output when our input is 0. So we're going to come right over here. That's going to be right there. Okay? It's our vertex. Next, if we have an input of 1, well, our output value is going to use a step pattern that's been altered, so we're going to add one half. So if we 
take negative 5 plus 1 half, we're going to get negative 4.5. And if we go to the other side, to an input of negative 1, we're going to also get an output value of negative 4.5. Next, for an input value of 2, well, using the step pattern that we've adjusted here, we have plus 3 halves, which is plus 1.5, negative 4.5 plus 1.5, well, that's going to be negative 3. And as we go for an input value of negative 2 on the other side, we're also getting an output value of negative 3. And we come over here to our last step, plus 5 over 2, or plus 2.5. Well, negative 3 plus 2.5 is going to be negative 0.5. And so that's for an input value of 3. Output value of negative 3 is going to be negative 0.5 also. And so now we can fill in and, and plot the points, okay? Uh, 1, negative 4.5, negative 1, negative 4.5, 2, comma, negative 3, negative 2, comma, negative 3, 3, comma, negative 0.5, and we have negative 3, comma, negative 0.5, and we have this parabola that is uh, wider than our parent function parabola because of this coefficient out front of one half. So I hope you can see that this is this is pretty easy. Next, we have another function, which in this case is in vertex form. Okay, the vertex form is pretty helpful in that we're given in the vertex the coordinates for that vertex pretty easily, and it comes out like this. For a vertex, the vertex form will be f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So in this case, in the case of this uh, parabola here, we have x minus h, so x has to be negative 3, so our coordinate, x coordinate is negative 3, and our y coordinate is negative 4. So that's our vertex, and we can just start out anytime we find a vertex by putting negative 3, comma, negative 4 right here. And so our axis symmetry is going to reside here at x equals negative 3. That's our axis symmetry, and this is our vertex down here at negative 3, comma, negative 4. Well, as far as the step pattern, our step pattern is a value of a, there is, is 1. a times this value here. So a is 1. So we maintain the plus 1, comma, plus 3, comma, plus 5 in the step pattern. So we take negative 4 plus 1. So as we go from, in, from input of negative 3 to negative 2, we're going to add 1 to negative 4 to make that negative 3. As we go to the other side of negative 3, which is negative 4, we're also going to have an output value of negative 3. Next, as we go to an input value of negative 1, we're going to have, according to the step here, we're going to have plus 3. Well, negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0. And we come over here to the other side, which is input of negative 5. We also have an output of 0. As we come down here to an input of 0, which is going to be the, along the y-axis, we're going to have a input value of, we add 5 to 0, so we're going to have 5. So as we come to the other side, negative 6 as an input gives us an output value of 5. Now we can sketch in the remaining points from the vertex. We already have the vertex sketched. We have negative 2 comma negative 3. We have negative 4 comma negative 3. We have negative 1 comma 0. We have negative 5 comma 0, we have 0 comma 5, that's going to be our y-intercept, and we have negative 6 comma 5. And so we have a standard uh, graph here, we can sketch 7 points, doesn't have to be artistically perfect, but just to give us the basic idea. So that's another uh, vertex form, can be very helpful. Now we have one, this function, which is f of x equals x squared 
plus 2x minus 7, and this one is in uh, what we call standard or sometimes general form. And for this, it's going to take us a little work to find the vertex. Well, the equation for the vertex is called the axis of symmetry formula, and we call that uh, AOS for axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. And you might remember from the quadratic formula that this, this uh, formula is part of the quadratic formula. So in this case we have a equals 1, b equals 2, and c, which we're not going to really need, is negative 7. So negative 2 over 2a, and a is 1, we have negative 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. So negative 1, x equals negative 1, is our axis of symmetry. x equals negative 1. That's our axis of symmetry. So we plug in negative 1 as our input value, and next we're going to plug negative 1 into this function. So f of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 7. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 minus 7. 1 minus 2, that's negative 1 minus 7. We're going to have negative 8. So negative 8 is our output value for an input of negative 1. And using our step pattern, now a is 1, right? Our step pattern does not change at all here. So we're going to add 1. So negative 8 plus 1 is going to be negative 7. So an input value of 0, we have an output value of negative 7, which I hope makes sense since our y-intercept value is negative 7. As we come to the other side of negative 1, at an input value of negative 2, we also have an output value of negative 7. And in using a step pattern of plus 3 for the next output value, input value, which is 1, we have negative 7 plus 3, which is going to be is negative 7 plus 3, that's negative 4, isn't it? As we come to the other side, for an input value of negative 3, we also have an output value of negative 4. And then for input value of 2, which is our next step, we go plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. And so coming to the other side, because of symmetry, input value of negative 4 is output value of 1. And so now we can draw in everything. First of all, our vertex at negative 1 comma negative 8. There it is. At our input value of 0, we have output value of negative 7. Input value of negative 2, output value of negative 7. Input value of 1, we have output value of negative 4. Input value of negative 3, we have output value of negative 4. And input value of 2, we have output value of 1. Input value of negative 4, we have an output value of 1. So we have, we can sketch this parabola. There we go. Watch that a little bit. So we have something that looks like this. So there we have it. Next, we have the quadratic function h of x equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 10. And so for this one, our step pattern is going to change, isn't it? Because this time our a value is 2. So if we have 2 times plus 1 comma plus 3 comma plus 5, uh, that's going to be, our step pattern is going to be plus 2 comma plus 6 comma plus 10. So that's what we're going to have to use. Now, let's find our axis of symmetry. And our formula for AOS, okay, AOS is x equals negative b over 2a. Well, here we have negative a equals 2, b equals 8, and so negative b over 2a is going to be negative 8 over 2 times 2, 
which is going to be negative 8 over 4, which equals negative 2. So our axis symmetry is going to be found at x equals negative 2. And here we have it, x equals negative 2. And what I'm going to do is erase this because we're going to need to graph using this area here. So we're going to plug in negative 2. That's our, in, our central input value. And now we're going to plug negative 2 into this equation here. So h of negative 2 is equals 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus minus 10. So that's going to be two, this is going to be two times negative two squared. This is going to be eight minus sixteen minus ten. Eight minus sixteen is negative eight. Minus ten is negative eighteen. And so for an input value of negative two, we have an output value of negative eighteen. And our step pattern is going to be plus two comma plus six comma plus ten. So for an input value of negative one, one to the right, we're going to have plus two. Negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. We go to the other side, and for an input value of negative 3, we have an output value also of negative 16. And next, at x equals 0, which is the next step to the right, we're going to have a, we're going to have a plus 6 in the step pattern. So we add 6. Negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10. And then we go to the other side. For an input value of negative 4, we have an output value also of negative 10. And it really shouldn't be too surprising if we didn't have some, it didn't have negative 10, it would mean that something was wrong here. The next one we have is input value of 1. Well, our step increase shows us plus 10 right here. So negative 10 plus 10 is 0. Input value of 1, output value of 0. Input value on the other side, negative 5, output value of 0. So the next thing we're going to do is, is graph our function. We have a vertex at negative 2 comma negative 18, which is down here. Input value of negative 1, output value of negative 16. Input value of negative 3, output value was using symmetry of negative 16. Input value of 0, output value of negative 10. So that's going to be a 6 up from here. 1, step it from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That should be negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that's right. And then input value of negative 4, output value of negative 10. Input value of 1, output value of 0. Input value of negative 5, output value of 0. So we have this skinny, which would be a vertically stretched or horizontally compressed parabola, depending on how you want to look at it. Okay, so there's that one, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, we have one more quadratic function to graph, and it's this one here. h of x equals negative x squared plus 10x plus 9, and if we notice here, we have a our a value is negative 1. So if we take negative 1 times plus 1 comma plus 3 comma plus 5, we get, uh, we get step is going to be negative 1 comma negative 3 comma negative 5. So that's the step pattern we're looking at. Next we're going to find our, our axis symmetry. Use our axis symmetry form. So axis symmetry is going to be this right here, x equals negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, a is going to be negative 1, b is going to be 10. So we have negative b, which is negative 10, over 2 times negative 1, which equals negative 10 over negative 2, which equals 5. So this is going to be our axis symmetry at x equals 5. So here we draw at 5, okay, x equals 5. That is our axis of symmetry. I think we'll have enough room here. Okay, uh, next we're going to need to plug in 
Okay, there's negative 5 right here. We're going to need to plug in negative 5 for this function. So h of negative 5 is going to be equal to negative 5 squared plus 10 times negative 5 plus 9. Well, in this case, negative 5 squared is going to be negative 25. And then we're going to have, uh, I put negative 5, it's going to be plus 10 times 5, it's going to be plus 50 plus 9. So negative 25 plus 50, that's 25. 25 plus 9 equals 34. So 34 is our uh, y coordinate for an input value of negative 5. Uh, next to the, did I say negative 5 here? x should be 5. That should be 5, not negative 5. Okay, input value of 6. 1 to the right. Well, using our step pattern, we're going this time negative 1. So 34 minus 1 is 33. And on the other side, as we go to, are using our step pattern, input value 4, we have uh, also 33 as an output. Next, at input value 7, well, the pattern is going to be minus 3, 33 minus 3, that's going to be 30. Okay, we go to the other side, input value 3, we also have output value 30. Uh, next one down, 8, we're going to have the step pattern negative 5. 30 minus 5 is 25, and as we come to the other side of the parabola, input value of 2, output value of 25. So now we are prepared to graph this function. And so first of all, we have our vertex at 5, 34. Well, here's, let's see, 40 and 30. 34 is going to be right here. We have 6, 33. So we go up to 6 here, and 33 will be right there. We have 4, 33. So here's 4, 33 right here. We have 7, 30. Well, here's 7, and here's 30 right here. So there we have that. We have 3, 30. We go up 3. We go up to 30 here. Uh, we have 8, 25. So 8. And 25 is going to be halfway between these two marks here, so that's where 8, 25 is. Uh, this is where uh, 2, 25 is right here. So graphing this parabola, we will look something like that. Now it looks wider, and it's a standard coefficient of negative 1, which wouldn't make it a wide parabola. It's just because of the scale of the dimensions here. So that's what it looks like. I hope you can see that graphing parabolas is easy using the step pattern method that we derived from the parent function of the, uh, the parent quadratic function. I hope that again this has been helpful to you. Thanks for viewing.